Greetings, y'all. <clears throat> Excuse me. How we doing? How y'all doing? Here we start out with little miss while she's hanging out. She being all sweet. Yeah, is that so? <clears throat> I feel like I had to catch my throat. I had spicy for dinner. So, what have we been up to? <laughs> uh, so one of the strongest players voted off the Dutch survivor, Rut Row. Well, I mean, isn't that like a solid strategy to get rid of the bigger threat? <clears throat> Excuse me. Also finished your story. Very nice. Oh, uh, let's see. We are still raising money for charity water. Um, I will have this link up all month long, but this will most likely be my last stream for this month. Um, I'm not planning on another one until the beginning of December. I was just writing because strongest player gone. Boo hoo hoo, I quit the show. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be upset people. They'll either watch anyway. That's usually the, the course of action. Uh, or be gone and gone. <laughs> Shoo, there's the door. Let the rest of us enjoy this. People are always going to shit on stuff. Like, why just. Just enjoy what you enjoy and leave everybody else alone. It's really that simple. Life is way easier than people make it. I just, I, I don't get it. But we are not doing any spooky tonight. So much relief to the two of you at least, I know. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to start out with probably about an hour or so of Fall Guys, I think. I don't usually play it for too long. Uh, you launched your game already? Nice. Um, then probably gonna do a quick speed run. We'll see if I got time. Because I do, I'm gonna start chapter one of Scarlet Hollow later. So that'd be nice. All right, finish posting stuffs, saying I'm live, yada yada. I was still in the middle of that when I switched over the camera. It was just too good to... Scarlet Hollow. Uh, it is listed as, quote, horror, but it's one of the, like, narrative games, or it's, uh, like, um, visual novels. It's a visual novel. So I don't really think it's going to be actually scary. Possibly, yes. I've not actually looked into content warnings. I probably should do that. Oops, I upset Senna. Actually, let me look that up real quick. Uh... All right, li full list of content warning is realistic gore, death, dead, dying and injured animals, children in peril, child death, claustrophobia, emetophobia, I don't know what that one is, oh, vomiting, and disturbing imagery and situations. I'm going to go ahead and copy that real quick, and we're going to put that into content warning. Uh, let's see, where is Streamlabs? Where are you at? Yeah, that I, I did notice that the there is it said animals. That that is the main reason I'm going ahead and put this into a command. Actually, I'm going to put it on a timer. Uh, well, no, it'll make more because it's only going to be the second half of the stream. So I'm going to put it on a timer or on a command. Uh, let's see. 
Cw paste Let's see. So Cw there we go. All right, so we got that included in, just in case when we get to that. That's gonna be the second half, so if you need to tap out and go to sleep full, that's totally cool. We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna play Fall Guys for about an hour, and then uh, probably, what, 30 minutes for Super Liminal? My speed runs are just under 30 usually. Um, super Numinal, I love Super Numinal, Leo. Oh, my ear is itching. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a little nervous about it now, but, uh, yeah, not the animals. I mean, we're good with the kids. Uh, <laughs> again, I will give plenty of warnings before we switch over. Um, the, that's what I'm wondering where it says realistic gore. Like, the art is not realistic art. Um... Hello, Archer. Welcome in. As Mort from Madagascar once said, did they say hello, friends? God, it's been forever since I watched Madagascar. How are we doing, Mr. Lost? I saw your red panda. I love it. How are you doing? I really hope I don't need to update any of my games. I never even check that. I haven't even played this uh, season at all. <laughs> Once we get over the oh god, get over the walls, we go for the males first. The children we can sell, and the women. Ooh, the women. We will always treat with respect. How's everybody doing, though? I mean, I feel like I have it. I mean, it's, it's only been a week. Ah, that is really loud. Jeez. It's only been a week, but I feel like it's been longer. It's, it's been a long week. Uh, let's see. No, yeah, I'm on the wrong... That's why I can't find where I put the game at. Hello, guys. It's on the wrong screen. Boom. We are in. You're ridiculously fantastic today. That is excellent to hear. It's actually been a pretty good day here, too. Um, I had a pretty chill morning. I actually slept until about 7. Coffee, did some reading, cleaned up the house. Uh, let's see. Else I had therapy a little bit ago. We ate. I always eat. I mean, there's not going to be a question there. Gone on forever. I swear, and I'm doing good. It really has. Also, apparently, Mort from Madagascar has had twelve wives who all died. Most of all, most of old age. Interesting. Got an acceptance letter in your short story that started the day of off just right. Hell yes, congrats. That is amazing. Um, is it going to be magazine published online? Where can I read it? Actually, I got finished the the shorts from uh, you and your wife that I got. I, I read the first one. The origin story one read that i haven't read the other two yet heroes by lost boy press published in 2022 yes arcadia i didn't want to say it wrong like i knew it started with an a and i couldn't picture the way the letters went 
I've, I've been like juggling books again. <laughs> I, I went from like barely reading to, oh, I'm just going to read three books right now. No big deal. Y'all let me know how the music is. Double fame? What? In the 17th of November, what is that? That's, what, Wednesday, I think? Excuse me. Glizzy gang. Oh, Lord. Knuckles? Oh, that's right. Amber played last time. I gotta change my outfit back. Uh, I could buy half of Knuckles. Oh, but look at that Mouse King. What? I'm kind of tempted to get the Mouse King. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting the Mouse King. Yeah, equip that. I gotta change how I look, though. That's not my colors. What colors did I have? It's these, wasn't it? Yeah, it's these. And then it was the lightning bolts because the lightning bolts make me go faster thank you so much for the lurk I'm gonna hit my star one very good uh still a bit tired from last I, I got behind ah been devouring a lot of indie books what did i miss good lord i don't feel like i looked away that long you're ready invite me you good wins tails tails is next there we go and yes we are continuing to raise money for charity. Water, I don't know where we're at. I think like 40, 45 out of the 100. If we get to the 100, I'm going to read a story I wrote on stream eventually. Probably not tonight, because I'm packing a lot into this stream. But we'll see. I will definitely read something that I wrote, though, if y'all reach the goal. So, it is a wonderful cause. Uh, they provide, uh, I can't remember, it's, they've provided clean water to over 29 countries now. It's like in the millions of people, seven, 700 million people, I think they've provided water to. Um, the 100% of donations go directly to funding water programs. They have private uh, benefactors that pay all of their company business, so they don't take a cut of donations. Um, to me, that's something that's very, very important with donations, because there are a lot of them that skim a good bit off that top. To line somebody's pockets um this everything i've looked into this organization they're they seem pretty legit um and I, i'm excited to actually be speaking on behalf of them and recommending them um i i do want to do more charity work through my channel um that that also i forgot um i have been talking it over with a handful of friends and whatnot, and I believe I'm going to reactivate my affiliate status. I've really been thinking on it. Um, Twitch has made a lot of efforts towards safety on the site. It's not perfect. Um, there, there's always going to be problems, but safety wise is they've made a lot of effort uh it's still the 50 50 split that a lot of folks are not totally happy about uh and i get it uh, i had one of my friends it was like everybody's always going to want more money it doesn't matter what it is um yeah they, they have included more security measures on account creation finally It's not perfect, but it, it is seemingly a step in the right direction. Fingers crossed. I mean, there's there's always going to be like organized hate raids, but not on the level that there was. So uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to re-up that. Uh, four spoke too soon. Oh no. Um, I, 
we were laughing about it. Honestly, the thing I miss most, it's not even the money. Um, though that little extra money every now and then from payouts was nice. Uh, I, I never asked y'all to donate. Uh, I always, I felt bad when I put up the sub goals. I'm not even going to do that this time. Uh, what? Oh, I, yeah, I might do some text to speech. Uh, exactly. Uh, I missed the channel points. <laughs> as silly as that is, I missed the channel points so much. <laughs> Helicopters and sprinklers. All right, so this is going to be my outfit. We're going with this. Now, remember how to invite. Yes. Get some more tea made. Reopen the colors. I, I have not forgot about y'all that did redeem color options. Um, I have not got around to that. Oh, I love the tutu. Rolly yeeted snowflake. That is, I love it. <laughs> the sprinkler noises were cool. Yes, they were. Those sprinkler noises was hilarious. Uh, now, <laughs> where green flower works too. Let's do this. I don't know how many courses we're going to get in. Uh, whoa, what? Ah, who donated? Hang on. Let me... I don't even have the Tiltify link up. What happened? What have y'all done? Well, alrighty then, uh, Mr. Lost and Bamadina, uh, thank y'all so much. Uh, we have surpassed our goal now. Uh, so, ah, panic, and now I gotta read something. Um, thank, thank y'all, uh, so much. Uh, wow, uh, was not ready for that. Drone, morning. How are we doing over there? All right, Vol, I completely got lost on your messages. I see them popping up down there, but I couldn't read them fast enough. And if y'all do exclamation mark W1 through W6, you can get more stats about uh, Charity Water. I don't even remember the controls. Panic. Y'all, it's, it's been a long time since I played this. How do I dive? Oh, okay, that doesn't... Oh, that was so close. I almost just jumped right into a hole. I did just jump right into a hole. Okay. How are we doing, drone? Oh, I just walked off the side. That was dumb. Okay. I was I started out so strong and then it's just gone. I honestly feel like the longer I've played this game, the worse I've gotten at it. saw it coming as soon as I jumped oh no Archer got me a quote what happened I don't even remember what I said that was dumb 
<laughs> That's a good quote. Get up! Oh no, I had a ledge there, it could have saved me. Did you make it, Vol? Because I did not. Uh, finally get to catch a hall stream. Yes, time zones are difficult, they really are. Y'all got a 15 hours ahead of us. Alright, Vol made it, so we'll be watching Vol. Uh, yeah, time zones are real rough. Because we're all over the place. Uh, Archer's six hours ahead of me, Vol seven. Uh, drone, y'all are 15. Uh, Vol, behave. I don't even, I have no idea what I'm gonna read. That, that's the opposite of behaving, Paul. Does it auto-follow you now? It should, right? <laughs> oh no, you've never survived this one. There he is. There's our vault. Uh, that'd be great no matter what. Uh, I, I am on Patreon. There are a couple of stories up there. Yeah, I've never played this level. Wait, shit. Vol, are you out? What happened? I looked away for like half a second. Fox got slimed. No. That goop is dangerous. Let's see. <laughs> I am uh, checking my Google Docs. Three bricks. Bricks features uh, two of my favorite characters I've ever written, and one of these days I'll actually complete a story for them. Bricks. Confirm. <laughs> I love it, Vol. Oh, my lord.
uh, grab 10 players during a round. Nah. <laughs> it really is adorable. I remember when I started playing this game, I was fairly good at it. Um, and it definitely feels like the more I play it, the worse I get, which feels counterintuitive. Need to reinstall it. Keep forgetting. <laughs> yes, that was fun. There was a couple of times that I ended up playing really weird hours just because uh, Halo couldn't connect to a server. Dizzy height, y'all. They used to be good at this one. <laughs> oh, you're right behind me. No! Okay, I got blocked. That is, okay, just another trip around. Okay, not a great start. We got this. Go, Vol. I believe in you. I missed the ramp. Get it full. No, oh, get up. No, I'm not going to make it. Too many in front of me. Ah, I was so close. Eighth, nicely done. I hope y'all came to watch me lose because, uh, that's what's going to happen a lot. I remember when we had a bunch of people like flying around the map. I haven't seen any so far. This is honestly the first time I've played it in several months. We loaded it up and did all the updates a couple weeks ago for my birthday when uh, my niece came to visit. She wanted to play it. She's a little bit addicted to it. And it's adorable. Where is our bowl at? Get it, little red panda. Ooh, good jump. <laughs> Nicely done. Heck yeah. I, I remember that. I, I did play then. You line up on a race and just one of them flew across the finish line. Nicely done.
Uh, oh, they're having technical issues. Well, poo. They have trouble picking up Twitch a lot. Well, hello there, Amber. Welcome in. I have already lost, but this adorable red panda is our friend Vol. How are we doing, Amber? Y'all having some internet troubles? Well, oops, F's in the chat, y'all. Uh, oh, yeah, y'all see the nails? Whoops, not lined up right. Come on, get some light. Check out those shiny purples. Love these. I've actually figured out that I like darker nails on me now. Like, I started out with real light colors. I feel like darker suits. I didn't tap out quick enough. Don't level up. Hey, nice. I'll pack up my bags. Versus Havel. Back my headset. Oh, y'all, guess what? I messaged the tattoo shop. Finally. I'm excited. Um, I'm gonna get one of my dad's tattoos recreated. <laughs> I glanced over there and saw my own tattoo at the thing. I was like, ooh, tattoo! Uh, so I don't know when, I haven't heard anything back yet. Um, probably be a couple of weeks. Finally getting a new tattoo. Been wanting to do it for quite a while. And then, we'll start talking to, I'm gonna start talking to him while I'm there, about eventually half-sleeving this. Because I've got some plans. And I just want to cover that part of my arm. But I am excited. And of course, there will be pictures. Uh, friendos will get messages first, I'm sure, and then, uh, uh oh, hit parade. Uh, I'll upload on uh, Discord and then Twitter, probably. Uh, ooh, actually, uh, duh, I'll get my patrons first view. Um, Alright, come on. Will I get past the first round tonight? Make it well.
They have, oh no. Oh, you're in. Okay. We both made it. Got scared there for a second. Cam, welcome in. How we doing? I seem to be okay so far. Cam was having a lot of internet troubles earlier. Trying to stream. Gonna close that out so I can see the... I haven't dropped any frames so far. Oh, we had a train? I didn't even hear it that time. Uh, my bitrate does seem to be a bit sporadic, but it actually seems to be on the high end rather than the low. It's kind of weird. Oh, I'm still in this. Eh. No, okay. <laughs> Somebody just saved me. No! I was knocked into somebody else, so I didn't fall off. <laughs> no! No. Okay. Train and stereo. Download is fine, but my upload is trash. Ooh. I hate that. I don't know how I made it out of that. Oh. And then I yeeted myself into a hole. <laughs> no! <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, I was just gonna jinx myself. Yeah, the big pointy thing he's mean. <gasps> I feel like they pushed me off the side. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, whatever. Hey, Vol made it though. Sweet. I really struggle at this level. Amber, uh, bless her heart. Uh, the LNT. Ow. Oh, hey, gotcha. Hey there, Tamaris. Welcome in. Good evening. How are we doing? How goes the demo and reworks? Alright, I'm out of this one. We're rooting for the Red Panda. That mouse is touchy. You're good, you're not helping. <laughs> Oof. Fourth place, nicely done, Vol. Nicely done. Oops. Uh, to add my lark just messed up. Santa was the last one to look across the line. Fruit is super dangerous. Uh, Tamaris, I know you were planning to stream. Uh, uh, Archer, can we get a shout out for Tamaris? What you streaming tonight? If you do.
but yeah, y'all make sure you check out Tamaris if you do not already. Most of her streams that I've caught have been uh, miniature painting. Uh, Oh. And, I mean, I'm no good at miniature painting, but I, I definitely enjoy watching it. I am always really bad at this level. I can't ever time it. Oh, that was that was a rip off. Did you get you got it? Nice jump. This game is adorable and chaotic. Uh and like sometimes I'm good at it and sometimes I'm just not. And it's just always chaos. We're gonna watch Santa. Uh, adorable and chaotic is actually a very good description of Archer. <laughs> we love you, Archer. I feel like most of my friend group can be described as uh, adorable and chaotic. There's several people that come to mind. Not close enough. Oh, oh denied Santa. Santa is being silly. Uh, that definitely suits the horror Ambrose. I need to set up a command for your horror Embro channel. Because I am super excited about that. <laughs> Rip Santa. Uh, we'd be a dorps and chaotic as heck. Absolutely. Still need to edit the Phasmo. As soon as I get it where the camera is on full, I'm gonna... Archer, actually, Archer, go ahead and do a shout out for you and for Goblinary. Oh, what the heck is this map? I've never seen this one. Oh, yeah, that, that is fair, given the two of you, but we actually got pretty lucky on that one. Jolly sleeping villain. Sorry, Vol. You had a heck of a run, though. Oh, all right. No, uh, Goblinary and Archeriel, uh, combined, create the Horror Hembros. It's hilarious. I heckin' love you two. Dun dun dun!
<laughs> well, I mean, that's sort of pretty fitting. Oh my god. Actually, I'm going to change my outfit. Let's see. Pink. I miss my unicorn. I'm going to go with my unicorn one. Uh, and groovy fur. Play this round, yay! Hang on, just a second, y'all. a weird thing to do when you're playing scary game and you're scared. <laughs>
Ah, okay, what I Oh my god, I missed a raid. Ah, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much, Chaos, and welcome, raiders, if y'all are still hanging around. Uh, what? How far back did I miss? Good lord. Uh... I am awful. Hang on. Uh, greetings, everyone. I'm Hall. Welcome in. Um, appreciate it. Uh, I, I stream on Sundays. Uh, I had to run to the restroom. Uh, we are currently doing um, charity water, uh, raising money for charity water. It's an organization, a nonprofit organization, that raises money to provide clean, sustainable water throughout the world. Um, let's see. Chaos. Uh, did we get a shout out for Chaos? Ara, ara uh bonnie welcome uh let's see let's see uh yeah i'll be back in a minute i'm here archer it is chair stream yes it is chair stream all the giggles uh i was just taking a quick break <laughs> uh da 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 I missed a lot. I'm so sorry, y'all. Uh, I didn't even put my be right back screen up. But uh, how how was the new game, Chaos? Uh, Erica, I think was the name of it. How was that? You keep rage quitting this game. Yeah, this game is rage inducing. I, I try not to let it get to me. Uh, have they really not released a fox outfit? You've never once had fun playing this. I'm so angry. Uh, Wi-Fi. Oh, y'all doing the alphabet run? Uh, just... I love when y'all drop the... And Jet, thank you so much for dropping in. How we doing? I, I always appreciate when the Australians wake up and say hi. Thank y'all so much. I know it's early over there for y'all. When I stream. Uh... Try to do the alphabet thing. Yeah, and every, every now and then when I leave the screen, they like to throw up the alphabet on me. <laughs> uh, lots of chaotic energy. Uh, is that a lovely southern accent? Oh, mine? My accent? Yes, a uh, little bit southern. Um been a little everywhere i live in the south currently oh chaos can i just sniff my books yeah, i got a lot of books back there uh mostly fantasy stuff wolfski good morning wolfski uh oh erica was rough uh i haven't done the fox thing yet i'm still not caught up on chat tried and failed the alphabet 9 a.m is way too early oh I wish. I, I get up at 4 a.m. most days. Been up since 6, Jet has. Just fell in the back. Yeah, I mean, every now and then the alphabet has to come out backwards. 4 Amber. I think y'all confused Amber. Uh... <laughs> Chaos, you're cracking me up. Uh, let's see randomized fire red game since i can't stream oh no uh any kind of am is too early yeah i mean yeah y'all are a mess okay vol are you ready internet issues right now oh no seems like a lot of people are having some internet trouble if, if i am i dropping any frames are we good over here You is ready. All right, I'm gonna ready up. Oh, no, ready up. Oh, yes. Uh, the clock is broken at 69 a.m. Uh, thank you so much, Archer. Good, no drop frames. Push full off the map.
Halo getting his beauty sleep, sleeping in. I actually slept in this morning until 7 a.m., y'all. 7 a.m. That's sleeping in for me. I don't even remember what the push button is, honestly. Is it E? No, E is dive. F is grab. Treetop tumble. I've not seen this one before. This is new. I'm always down for hugs, though. Be right back in a stretch before my hip decides to get stuck in position for no good reason. That's a good reason to stretch. Someone be chaotic while I'm gone. We all need some good stretches. This looks bad. Okay, we're just gonna go down the slime. Some big old frogs. Oh, oh, no. Need coffee first. Hey, that sort of worked out a little bit. Uh, excuse me, that did not. Oh, the jump pads. Ooh, I like that. That's handy. Stabs full with his own femur. That gets aggressive. Oh no, it's a rhino. Yeah, oh no no no. I almost fell off the map. Slippy slimy. I qualified. I didn't even know what I was doing. Did you make it, Vol? Where are we at? Yeah. Did you make it? Uh I can't believe that actually worked. Hey, hey there, or Nim tier. If I can run that together real quick. Welcome me. You made it. We both made it. Yes. <laughs> this game is just utter chaos. That's why I mean I I named the stream Chaos Nooms in a new story. Uh, that's what we're planning. And do this for a little bit longer. Probably another 15 minutes or so. And then we're going to do a speed run real quick, and then we're going to check out a new story that does have some content warnings. We'll throw that up when we get to that. Does it work for you anymore? Uh, ah. You okay? Steps. Steps all with someone else's fever. I don't know what I'm doing. Count the fruit. What does that even mean? One, two. I don't even know what's happening. Coconut or fruit? Is that what we're doing? I just... None of this makes any sense to me. Oh. 
I, I didn't know what I was doing. If I sit like an absolute criminal in my head, we'll just get stuck. Ooh. Yeah, she's dead in the game, by the way. Teddy Roosevelt wiped her off the map. Noise. Uh, bone clicking back in place is not fun. What the heck? Gotta lurk for a bit. Need to get some food. Enjoy your food, Tamaris. Thank you so much for dropping in, and I appreciate the lurk always. Very much appreciate lurkers. Y'all are y'all are wonderful. Y'all make this all possible. Count how many of each fruit. Then, when the screens tell you what to stand on based on a number. Oh. Oh, yeah, I never caught any of that. Fighting ice type mudkip for my start. Hey, it actually started on bowl. Bowl's still in it, y'all. Still rooting for bowl. Ooh, nice job. Oh, okay. The last one has to have any. Gotcha. So close. Oh. That was so close, full. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sneaky pull away. Wait, I'm lurking for myself. I need to pull up another lark. I just realized, because I was lurking for chaos before she raided. Uh, let's see. And again, thank you so much for the raid. I really do appreciate it. But we did reach our goal. So when we're done here, I will read one of my short stories I wrote a couple of years ago. It's super short. It's only like 400, 500 words, I think. <laughs> like how Vol just chooses chaos. Pigeon. What a sneaky pigeon. Oh, I know what everybody wants to see. Y'all didn't come here for me or for Vole. Y'all are here for baby girl. This is my little Cinnabon. She's so sweet. Oh, she's looking at the camera. Congrats, Vol. Vol made it through. Thank you, Bamadina. I appreciate it. <laughs> Senna is always concerned. She's got, like, perpetually depressed face. She's so sweet. She's absolutely my baby girl. Yeah, is that so? Avoid, avoid falling into the slime. Can I start us out? Oh, yay! <laughs> just Peach, I just realized what it said under your name.
Oh, it's throwing stuff at you too. That's just cruel. Mouse in this is like super touchy. May need to turn down sensitivity. Hey, hey! Nicely done. Wait. Yeah, you made it, I'm about to say. <laughs> that was easy. You really shouldn't have said that. You just jinxed yourself. You know that, right? Hexagon! I've never done one done well at this level. Hexagoner. Ball fell through the floor there for a second. This is stressful, and I'm not even playing. F's in the chat, y'all. Right, Archer? I'm like so stressed. I wasn't even doing anything. <laughs> Klutzy sparkling shark. F <laughs> Oh, you get points to get closer to crowns now. That's nice. Oh, it's the challenges. Gotcha. Alright, so... Well, let's do one more, and then I've got a short story to read before we do a super liminal speed run. Because we we're raising money, oop, we we're raising money for charity water, and we reached our one hundred dollar goal. So I will be reading uh, Bricks. It's a super short story that I wrote a while back, introducing two of my favorite characters. Uh, I have yet to actually find a dedicated plot for these two yet. Get there. I, I do have a story in the works for them. I just haven't completely nailed down the plot on it yet. You just love it when you've got really good characters and just no story for them. Nothing.
like this new music. Ooh, gate crash. I have so many OCs and no stories written for them. Yep. Let's go, gate crash. I love you too, Vol. We got a race to do. We can hug later. Miss that jump. That was disappointing. Oh, okay, I made it. That was tough. I beat you? What? You got the finish line though, right? Goodness, I'm already yawning. Hey there, Alex. Welcome in. Good evening. How are we doing? What? trying to do a quick tweet. I don't think I'm going to get it. Nope. Okay. Finish the tweet in a second. Oh. Oh. I got yeeted real hard on that one. Yote. The past tense for yeet. Ooh, okay, I'm a little concerned at how smooth that was. What? In tarnation. Come on. 15th. Did you already make it, Bull? Oh, good. Top half. Nice. We're both through to the next round. Okay, y'all, I'm, like, really nervous about reading. <laughs> um, and say that um, I am actually planning to do audiobooks, eventually. I made a practice run the other day of a story. Um, got some feedback from a couple of folks. Gonna do a re-recording of it tomorrow. So, ye. I am awful at terror at team sports. Can be lurking and listening for a while. Got some stuff that needs to take care of. Alrighty. Thank you so much for the lurk. I appreciate you always, Archer. You're a wonderful fiend. So much snow. the ball. There we go. 
<laughs> just took that to the face. I, I'm terrible at the team games, just honestly. At least Fol and I are on the same team, that's nice. It grew strawberry slices? I don't even know what that means. Somehow we won. That was nice. <laughs> Hug you. <laughs> I, what is the hug? Is it F? You want snow in your face? Team Yellow Curse hits again. Yeah, those yellow folks don't do so well. Maybe we'll get you some snow this year, Amber. I mean... I'm not crazy about snow, but maybe we'll get some. I don't even know. This looks terrible. Don't get knocked out. That seems easy enough, right? Ah, okay. <laughs> I like these little rhinos, they're kind of cute. You're dead already? Yeah, right. No, no! Oh, okay, I got saved. That was luck. Ah! Nope, they can save that time. <laughs> Oops. Dang rhinos hate you. Alright. Let's make this little tweet ready here. Oh, I was going to make a tweet to say that I was about to read a, something I wrote. I guess we could tap out of this. Um, do y'all want to do, do you want to do one more bowl? Before we do that? Because we, we can probably go for another 20-ish minutes or so and I could just cut out Super Liminal. Aw, oh, I'm six points short of level up. Six. Six points. Is that an Among Us top? Yeah, we're gonna keep playing a little bit.
<laughs> among us. With the egg on his head. Sent among us. Oh lord. That pun. No Santa's among us. <laughs> You're silly. Am I crazy or was the amount raised always 210? Wait, what? Did we? Did somebody donate more? What? Alex? Um. Alex, um, thank you. Um, I'm speechless. Um, uh, the we we passed a hundred at the beginning of the stream, but thank thank you so much, Alex. Oh. oh. I didn't realize I was still playing. I was not expecting that. Thank you, thank you so much. Try to go across the top. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm gonna read two stories. I gotta figure out what the other one's gonna be though. Tipsy, welcome me in. How are we doing? Oh, I missed the jump. Yes, I will read a second story. I don't know what though. Oh no. I'm having to change my tweet. I, this was new information I didn't have. We both qualified somehow. Like, I forgot I was playing at the beginning. Yes, I, I'm raising money for Charity Water. It's a nonprofit organization that uh, looks to provide clean water throughout the world. Um, they have done so for 700 million people. Uh, thank you, Ash. Um, you can uh, yeah, I'll ignore the tip part. I forgot that it auto does that. Um, the they've provided clean water for over 700 million people throughout the world in 29 countries. And they are looking to this year uh, to celebrate uh, 15 years of operation. They want to fund 15 clean water programs. And I'm already out of this. Um, so it's about $10,000 for them to fund a clean water project. So they are raising money for um, uh, their, their collective goal that my goal contributes to. Are you already out, Bull? Nope. Um, the collective goal is $150,000 for the end of November. And we have contributed over 200 to that now. Y'all have contributed over 200 to that now. And I very, very much appreciate it. Uh, it is a wonderful cause. Um, you can find out more information about the organization at charitywater.org. Um, yes. I don't know what other story to read. 
I don't like how most of the stuff I've written. <laughs> um. Hmm. You did survive. Nicely done. We do have good peeps. This this is a wonderful group of people. Y'all are, are truly, truly amazing. Um, let's see. I do have... Let's see, I wrote a poem a while back. The timing is garbage on it, but it's got good rhymes. What's the name of your favorite? Bayview? You want me to read Bayview? I can't remember if that was the one you want, liked or not. Can't imagine what it would be like to not have safe tap water exactly. Yes. Okay, so we'll do that. Uh, it's a little bit longer than Bricks, actually. So we'll read Bricks and then we'll read Bayview. I have to find where I put Bayview. Honk. You got this, Bull. We are cheering you on. I love that honk. Uh, Bayview is actually one that I'm going to do a complete rewrite on and try to make a short film for it someday. Because Bayview is a real fun story. Yeah, we, we do take a lot of things for granted. Ooh. You got this. Nicely done. Halo, welcome in. Made it just in time. Um, after this round, I'm going to be reading a couple of things I wrote because we have surpassed our goal. The goal was $100, and we've surpassed 200 raised for Charity Water. I, I'm, I'm blown away. Uh, Y'all are amazing. Uh, I'm going to read two shorts that I wrote years ago. It's It's been a while now. Uh, I've not revisited either one of them, and they probably both need some rewrite material, but uh, y'all get it as I wrote it a couple of years ago. Final 14. Nicely done. Get it, you little yeeted snowflake. Um, I think there is a language warning for bricks. I think. Oh, uh, there's definitely a violence warning for Bayview. That star was moving so fast. Ooh. Vol made it through. Ow, hit myself in the head. That was really close. I think the one in the helicopter hat actually saved you. Because <laughs> I think you got knocked into them. It is finale time, I do believe.
You got this, Bull. We should be good. I mean, neither one of them are particularly bad. Well, who? What is that outfit? I love it. Tropical tree, nice. All right, then, Cole, thank you so much for playing. Uh, we're gonna switch over and pull up a couple of these stories now. Uh, okay, we're good. I'm, I'm not nervous. Oh, it's the bride base now for the bride. Let's drop out of the game. We'll go full screen here. And I'm just going to pull it up in front of me. Let's see. Gotta find where I put everything. Aw, hello. Good lord. All right, we'll start with bricks. It's short. And I'll have to find where I put the other one. Uh, let's see. Neat. BB girl. Come say hi. Uh. Thank you all so much. What's up, a bracelet? I don't even know. Whatever the captions are doing. Uh, curse this piece of cheese. Um, okay, so we raised enough money uh, to pass our goal of a hundred dollars. We've doubled it, so I'll be reading two stories that I have written. That. Both of these were shared a long time ago when Tipsy and I had our own website that we ran for a while. Uh, we ended up shutting it down because we couldn't really maintain it, and then they like skyrocketed the price of hosting on us. So we, we made the choice to cut it then. Ooh, okay. And I believe Bricks is available on my Patreon. If anybody wants to join over there. Uh, so, our first story is a fantasy setting introducing two of my favorite characters that I've honestly ever written. Um, and one day they will have their own story. But uh, this was their very brief introduction. That's even shorter than I thought it was. All right, so everybody, this is Bricks. Thank you all so much for contributing to the donation to make this happen. Yeah, okay, I need some water. Like, I'm nervous. Like, I read in games all the time, Brio. But this is actually something I wrote. Okay. <clears throat> Where are we going again? asked a gruff voice, attempting to whisper. A sigh of impatience preceded the answer. You never listen. I do, too. You were just nodding absentmindedly while staring at the barmaid, snapped the diminutive woman. 
dressed completely in black, she was becoming frustrated with her partner of crime. She was flirting with me, he mumbled, likely just to himself. She was flirting with everyone, you half-wit. The large man stopped abruptly, stood to his full height, head and shoulders loomed over the woman. He was an intimidating sight for most. That wasn't very nice, Bricks. My apologies, Gregor. Bricks patted his hip in a placating gesture. The insult was uncalled for. We just really need to focus on getting this ring to our client. Gregor was drifting away again. Bricks took a deep breath to calm herself. The pair continued through the sparse forest for several minutes in silence. The lights of Brayton became visible in the glow of dusk. I can get in and out, quick and quiet, but I need you to keep watch. You got it, Gregor said with a wide lopsided grin. Ain't no one sneaking up on you, little Bricks. With an oversized hand, he patted her head less than gently. Brick shook her head, but couldn't hide the smile that tugged at her lips. It had not been long since sunset, so she knew the small town would have a limited guard presence. They may be even changing shifts. The pair surveyed the outer edge of the village, avoiding a passing guardsman. She caught a glimpse of the house that matched the provided description. Yellow eaves and red shutters adorned the two-story cottage. Bricks nodded to the building. Don't draw any attention to yourself, big guy. I'll be back quick as I can. The second window she tried was unbarred, and she slid through without a sound. The house was dark. To the left of the stairs, a bedroom door stood open. Bricks crept into the vacant room. A jewelry box sat on the dresser, painted by fresh moonlight. The simple silver band was the centerpiece of the sparse collection. This is too easy, Bricks whispered to herself. After finding the street below empty, she climbed to the window and dropped gracefully to the street. A pair of boots were sliding away into the bushes near the location she had last seen Gregor. Bricks swore under her breath and ran towards the bushes. Gregor tower towered over an unconscious guard. His smile was forced and full of guilt. He asked who I was, Gregor offered as an explanation. When Bricks didn't respond, he continued. I panicked, and I punched him in the face. Of course you did. It doesn't matter, I've got the ring. She patted her satchel. Let's get the hell out of here. Alright, that was an introduction to those two. Um, I have written quite a bit more involving those two. Uh, that I don't think anybody has seen. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can find the other one. I haven't done anything with Baby in a long time. It's probably buried. The, oh man, the formatting on this is busted. Mm, it's not spaced out right. This could be fun to read. Okay. Wait, what? <laughs> All right, y'all ready? This is Bayview. This one was written over five parts, so you'll notice the breaks in the story. Um, when it was originally posted, it was in five different parts. And I've not gone back to clean up those breaks. So here we go. <clears throat> she knew they were watching her. They were always watching. 
It had been 18 days since she arrived at the Bayview residence. Of course, she would never let any of the others know she was keeping count of the days. Lily, where are you, Lily? The voice was warm and inviting. Too much so. It always made Lily uncomfortable. Coming, Miss Bradshaw, Lily called out as she turned off the lights in the laboratory. Lily stepped into the hallway and closed the door. Dolly Bradshaw was slightly shorter than Lily, or at least she would be, if it had not been for the lively blonde hair that always defied gravity. Dolly scoffed and shook her head, not a single hair went astray. Come on now, dear. The woman glanced at her wristwatch. It's three minutes past seven. We have a guest for dinner. This is very poor etiquette, Lily. Be sure to apologize before introductions. Yes, ma'am, Lily said with a bow of her head. Lily followed Dolly past the reading area and to the staircase. A male voice carried up from the first floor. Oh, goodness, Dolly whispered. We've missed Monty's prayer. Dolly cast a look of disapproval at Lily. We'll let him finish. And they did. Dolly led the way to the dining table around the banister of the staircase. Mont, uh, Monty Philip Bradshaw sat at one end of the elongated table. He was a tall, lean man with prominent cheekbones, and he was dressed all in black, creating a stark contrast to the elaborate colors of his wife's outfit. The chair at the other end of the table was vacant, awaiting Dolly. On the broad sides of the table, there were three chairs to each side. Three young women were seated facing the staircase. The three were very similar to Lily. Height, weight, hair color, and features would cause anyone to assume they were related. A fact that had made Lily uncomfortable since she had arrived. The three had been there longer than Lily, and they spoke very little to one another. The Bradshaws liked silence. There was only one young woman with her back to Lily and Dolly. Her blonde hair was in a braided ponytail. My apologies for my tardiness, Lily said with a curtsy. I am Lily. Lily tensed as a familiar giggle came from the table. Her heart leapt into her throat as her twin sister turned to look at her. After the awkward family dinner, the girls retired to their room for the evening. Lily and the other girls slept in the spacious attic where six twin-sized beds were arranged evenly. The house rattled from an explosion. Lily's heart leapt into her throat. Her twin sister, Chris, squeezed her hand, and Lily released a breath. You came after the last fireworks show, Aster said after seeing Lily jump from the unexpected explosion. She then explained Monty's frequent firework displays. Monty apparently loved to launch fireworks to celebrate various occasions. Today's Dolly's birthday, Aster in informed them. Lily found little sleep that night. She spent most of the next day trying to stay as near to her sister as she could manage, despite their assigned chores. It was at dusk when the fireworks started again. Poppy, the eldest of the five nearly identical girls, looked up to the ceiling as if she could see through it. There's always fireworks when the girls come and go. Holly got accepted to that fancy school, fireworks. Then you arrive the next day, she looks at Lily with questioning eyes. Heather, who had been quietly sitting in the corner, looked up from her book. Is one of you leaving? She asked the other girls. They exchanged looks before Poppy spoke. Monty and Dolly said they need, needed to speak with me about something important. Poppy looked nervous. I have to meet with them after the fireworks. Heather scoffed. Figured as much. Since they brought in Chrysanthemum, you're, you're 18 now. The Bradshaws have probably arranged a job for you in the city. She raised her eyebrows as she looked to Lily and Chris. Lily squeezed Chris's hand in return. The fireworks continued as the girls fell silent. Two hours later, the fireworks followed. Dolly and Monty came down the stairs from the widow's walk. Poppy dear, Dolly called the, as they closed the attic. The Bradshaws both had thin, forced smiles that made Lily's hair stand on end. Would you come downstairs with us? We have important matters to discuss with you. Lily and the others exchanged concerned glances. 
They waited for Poppy to return. As the night wore on, the girls fell silent, or fell asleep one by one. I don't even remember where the actual breaks were because it's not spaced right. This, this whole thing is just ran together. Uh, Lily awoke the following morning to find Aster and Heather talking in hushed tones. The room was dark, but Lily instinctively knew it could not still be night. Lily leaned over to her nightstand and pulled on the pull chain of the lamp. Nothing happened. Power's out, Aster said. This happened when Holly left, too. Why? Lily asked. She looked to her sleeping sister. Lily jumped as the lights flooded the room. Power's back, my dears, Dolly called out while climbing the stairs. We have some news, bad and good. Sadly, Poppy's family had an unexpected death yesterday, and she will not be returning. I'm sure she would have liked to say her goodbyes, but didn't want to wake you. On a positive note, however, Dolly showed a very toothy grin. We have a new guest. The entire family had collected in the sitting room to welcome Violet to the Bayview residence. Lily was actually enjoying herself, despite the fact... Uh, the girls were taking turns discussing their less-than-pleasant childhood experiences. With a curtsy to the Bradshaws, Lily excused herself to the restroom. Monty and Dolly nodded, but eyed her suspiciously. As Lily passed Monty's study, her reflection through the uh, cracked door caught her attention. Lily glanced over her shoulders to see if there was someone behind her, then slowly pushed the door open. It was not a mirror after all. It was a large portrait of a young woman nearly identical to Lily. Beneath the portrait, in neat block letters, read Ivy Bradshaw. Lily did not realize she had walked halfway across the room when the door closed behind her. Monty was now standing between her and the only exit. He stared past Lily to the portrait, his daughter. Well, he said with a sigh, I suppose it's time you knew. He turned to the door and opened it an inch. Dolly, my love, pausing for her faint acknowledgement, I'll be back shortly. Then he motioned for Lily to follow him. The old grandfather clock slid away to reveal a dark staircase. They descended in silence to a simple wooden door. Monty looked at Lily for a brief moment, then pushed the door inward with a groan. Go ahead, he whispered. She did as she was told, too frightened to speak. I'll be right outside when you're ready. He closed the door before she could protest. The spacious room was dimly lit. One wall was lined with bookcases. Hundreds of worn books were stacked this way and that. Some looked as if the spines were on the verge of collapse. As for the remainder of the room, all appeared to be the feature image of a research facility. The stark white surfaces, elaborate medical equipment, and delicate chemistry sets. Everything, except the books, was pristine. A chill ran up Lily's spine when she realized she was not alone in the room. A young woman, reclined on a medical bed, lay motionless. Lily stepped closer. Each echoing step caused her more discomfort. The young woman was facing her, but there were no eyes. Lily wanted to look away from the grotesque image before her, but could not bring herself to do so. The majority of the young woman's body was a charred and bloody mass of what appeared to be fresh scars. Her shaking hand rose slowly from the bed and extended towards Lily. She spoke, a strained effort in a thin, raspy voice. Help. Tears ran down Lily's face as she trembled, searching for something anything to say. Then the young woman spoke again. Kill me. Each syllable came with a labored breath. Please. Lily was trembling. She held her knees close to her chest and did her best to disappear into the wall at her back. A heart rate monitor was connected to the young woman on the medical bed. Its slow and steady beeping bore into Lily's sanity. Just as she thought she could not take any more, the following beep elongated. Lily looked up with blurred vision to find the young woman motionless. 
the unchanging sound continued for what felt like an eternity. The wooden door groaned, and Lily could hear footsteps. Her eyes remained fixed on the horizontal line until the screen went blank and the sound finally ceased. Monty turned from the monitor to face her. I'm, Lily started but sniffled. She wiped her eyes with the back of her hand, then her nose, before trying to speak again. I'm sorry for your loss, Monty, um, Mr. Bradshaw. That's very sweet of you, dear, as usual. Dolly's... That's very sweet of you, dear. As usual, Dolly's voice filled whatever room she occupied. Her forced smile faded as she took in the scene before her. Dolly focused on Lily and said in a voice much harder than Lily had ever heard from her. But Poppy didn't mean much to us. Honey, there is no need to be insensitive, Monty interjected. The poor girl's frightened. Dolly lashed out and struck Monty across the left cheek. Lily recoiled from the strike. Monty's pale face reddened. With a heavy sigh, Dolly walked towards the bookshelves that lined the wall near Lily. I am sorry, my love. This is just so frustrating. Each word barely made it through her clenched teeth. She made an effort of tidying her hair despite the fact that it had remained as pristine as ever. Lily slowly looked between the Bradshaws, then to the wooden door that led to the staircase. She wanted to run. She did not know what these two would do to her or her sister, but she had to escape. Dolly continued to eye the bookshelves with an intensity, clearly looking for a particular book. Well, darling, she said with the usual forced kindness, I think it's safe to say the new ways have failed us. She pulled a large, aged, leather-bound book from the shelves. CLM 849 was scribed in black ink on the cover. The answer can only be found in the old ways. Dolly faced Lily. Her pale eyes were those of a predator. Of course, it would require more than one life. Chris, get out! The words ran together in Lily's panic. She doubled. Uh, she doubted anyone upstairs would even be able to hear her. Lily knew if she could not get to the others, the Bradshaw would repeat whatever torture they had wrought on Poppy. Lily had spared one last glance at the young woman's burned body before sprinting towards the wooden door. Lily slammed into the door. Her heart pounded. She heaved the door towards her. Her head jerked back painfully as Lily found herself looking up at the ceiling from the floor. Dolly stood over her. Several strands of long blonde hair fell from her fingers. Dolly hauled Lily up from the floor by the front of her shirt, then pushed her back into the room. Lily stumbled but kept her feet beneath her. Her palms rested on the cold metal countertop. That was awfully rude of you, darling, Dolly chided as she closed the door back. Out of her peripheral, Lily saw Monty crossing the room. She could hear the echoing steps of Dolly's heels coming closer from behind her. Lily carefully wrapped her fingers around a glass speaker full of clear liquid. I promise, Dolly said, the old ways. Lily spun hard to her left and the glass shattered across Dolly's cheek, soaking her face in the clear liquid which started to hiss. Dolly recoiled sharply towards Monty and slammed into the counter stretched out between them. Lily attempted a run to the door again. Glass shattered behind her. Monty screamed out in shock. A roar of flames drowned him out. The door swung open, and Lily risked a glance back into the room. Monty was engulfed in flames, and Dolly lay on the floor, flailing and, cl and clutching at her face. Dolly struggled to get back up. Her beehive wig rolled across the floor. Wispy white hairs were pressed flat against her skull. Lily ran up the stairs, screaming for her sister. Outside of Monty's study, Violet grabbed Lily by the shoulders and forced her to make eye contact. What happened? Fire, Lily choked out through panicked breaths. Thick smoke was billing out of the basement and into the rest of the house now. The Bradshaws, they're, they're dangerous. We have to get out of here. Violet helped Lily get the others out of the house and onto the patio. Violet's eyes darted back towards the flaming house in a blur of motion. A gun appeared in her hands. Freeze, Bradshaws, Violet commanded. You're under arrest. Dolly, appear Dolly, appearing from the smoke, pointed at Violet and hissed, Ad mortem. 
A twisted smile spread across her blistered face. Violet collapsed in a heap, her features sunken and her skin a sickly gray. The flames consuming Bayview residents cast a strange light over her corpse. Such a waste, Dolly spat. Her gaze fell on Lily. The rest of you, however, I will sacrifice to bring back my precious ivy. The heat of the fire was intensifying. Lily knew Chris, Heather, and Aster were behind her, but she did not know where. Violet lay dead a few feet to Lily's left. Lily could see the gun from the corner of her eye. Dolly looked over Lily's right shoulder. I'll start with your sister so you can bear witness. As soon as Dolly's gaze left Lily, she dived for the gun. Lily aimed at Dolly and started squeezing the trigger. Lily continued squeezing the trigger even after all the bullets had been fired. Another blast echoed as one of Monty's fireworks lit up the sky over the burning building. Dolly lay motionless in a widening puddle of dark blood. Chris, Heather, and Aster pulled Lily away from the gruesome sight. By the time the four reached the street, flashing lights filled the night sky. Police officers and firefighters scurried about in an effort to contain the flames and ensure everyone was safe and out of the house while fireworks continued above. A pair of par- a pair of paramedics. I was doing real good until that. A pair of paramedics escorted a gurney with a blood-soaked sheet towards an ambulance. A manicured hand hung limply from beneath the sheets. Lily cautiously watched as the hand dissolved into dust and the sheet sagged. Particles of dust drifted into the night breeze. The four young women huddled together under a wide blanket watched as the firework show concluded, marking an end to the Bradshaws of Bayview. <laughs> yeah, paraparamedics. <sighs> oh, man. That one was longer than I remembered it being. So, what y'all think? <laughs> thank you, Halo. Oh, thank you, Bama. Y'all are great. <sighs> Bayview is one that I want to do a rewrite on and do a short film on it one day. Actually, I kind of forgot about it. Oh, thank you, Paul. Um, Bayview has always been one of those pet projects of mine. I've always loved it, and I've just never had a chance or made the time to go back to it. And I keep working on other projects. Um, but yeah, someday that one's going to be a short film. Um, and then I do have some other stuff in the works, obviously. I'm trying to actually do better about writing more. Uh, we got, I got super excited about NaNoWriMo and just, I'm not feeling it. I don't know if it's the, the grind mentality of you got to get a thousand words a day, but like, it just felt like so much pressure and I've had no urge to actually write because of that pressure. So I'm taking the pressure off, working on some story ideas and doing some edits. Um, I'm actually off work tomorrow, so I'm planning to actually get some writing done. Uh, yes, and then I could edit the film. Uh, that's, um, I think, long-term goals. I, I definitely wanted to get into screenwriting. Uh, I do have some editing experience now. Um, so that would be fun. So, and especially something like this, this would be a relatively small cast, not super expensive other than the fire, which maybe I could figure out how to do that with uh, special effects. But I don't know. Um, maybe I'll make my own movie. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? 
Okay, I'm going to get me some more water, run to the restroom real quick, and then we're going to check out... Uh, I took like two weeks for just 6,000 words. It happens. I mean, I, I've gone like months without writing, and then I've done 6,000 words in a day before. Because <laughs> every now and then you just kind of lose it, and just the words won't stop. Um... Thank you, Vol. I do appreciate it. Uh, we do need to throw up a content warning, apparently. I looked up this game. Um, does have a pretty extensive content warning list for, quote, realistic gore, death, dead, dying, and or injured animals. That one kind of throws me. Children in peril, child death, claustrophobia, emitophobia, vomiting, disturbing images. Is this The Sims? Yeah, I mean, possibly. It's, <laughs> uh, it is called Scarlet Hollow. Uh, this is only going to be the first chapter of Scarlet Hollow. Uh, it's a ongoing game in design right now. Um, it's from the, is it, if Tipsy's still listening, question mark? Um, content warning. This is a horror game and is not intended for all audiences. Please visit our website for more details, which is what I pulled up. So I, I do like that I actually threw that warning up there. That was pretty nice of them. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get the game pulled up. There we are. Fantastic. I'm liking the music so far. But um, the people that made this game are... How's that volume, by the way? The people that made this game are behind one of Tipsy's favorite podcasts. Yes, the No Sleep Podcast. Especially since kids can die in Sims. Thank you so much, Medina, for uh, hiding away with us. Enjoy your dinner. Uh, maybe I'll do some more. I, I want to do some more writing. I got to get back into it. And then stuff that I write, I can actually read to y'all. And I, I've got some friends that are writers that might be okay with me reading their stuff. I'll get in touch with some folks. Uh, this content's not your thing. I totally get that. Vol, get you some rest. Brandon Boone does the music, and I think one of the No Sleep artists are involved, too. Uh, Y'all gonna dip out, too, I understand. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit more on the mature side. Thank y'all so much for hiding away for some Fall Guys and for story time. I, I really appreciate y'all hiding away. I'm gonna run to the restroom real quick. We'll check on sound. Y'all let me know if it's too been too loud. And I'll be right back, y'all.
I didn't turn my mic on. Back at it again. So, getting into Scarlet Hollow. Let's throw up the content warning again. Um, I just threw out a tweet. Uh, the game does feature realistic gore, death, dead, dying, and injured animals, children in peril, child death, claustrophobia, emetophobia, or vomiting, disturbing images and situations. So, got that. Just please be advised if that's not your thing. Totally get it. It's cool. I honestly do not know what to expect from this game, but I'm kind of excited. I really like the art and the music so far. So, let's find out what we're in for. Your name is... Paul. You live in the city of... Twitch. Okay, I'm already in love. Y'all, 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 look. <gasps> they have they them pronouns. <laughs> Select two traits. Traits unlock additional paths and dialogue options. Powerful build, strong and athletic, the pinnacle of fitness. An intimidating presence, tough as nails. Mystical, strange and unusual. You see the threads of reality in ways others cannot. Talk to animals. You can talk to animals. Animals can talk to you. A gift and a curse. Street smart. Know how to lie and when you're being lied to. Slick and convincing. No door can hold you. Keen eye. Observe it. Picks up on vibes, understands others' perceptives. Perspectives. Book smart, well read and rational. Possess a wealth of esoteric knowledge and know when to use it. A talented researcher. Or hot. Attractive and charming. A natural flirt. People want to either be with you or be you. Interesting. So, I think. What do y'all think? What should we do? Anybody got any preferences? I do like the idea that this looks like it would provide quite a bit of replay value. <laughs> Ooh. Um, are we taking the furry path? Gonna go full furry. gut instinct is mystical and keen eye. So I'm book smart and keen eye. Let's go that route. Book smart and keen eye. Mystical just sounded kind of fun. Kind of strange and unusual. You see the threads of reality and ways others came on. It just seems potential, but I'd probably do that for a reason. You jolt awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you'd only just managed to start drifting off, and now here you are, awake again, and still exhausted. Mood. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing this bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long-lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late-night stops and seedy depots that felt unsafe 
even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of her mother, your aunt, seems like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Fortunately, the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. So anyway, I was saying... Oh no, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the past five hours, talking at you without pause. You're not sure he even stopped when you started to doze off. At first, you thought he was just being friendly, but that was several hours of one-sided conversation ago. <laughs> I was up in Maryland, looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. Me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff, you know, pushing joggers into the harbor, that sort of thing. Wait, what? Dude, what's wrong with you? Hell yeah, sounds awesome. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, you know, teen stuff. Yeah, clearly, that's what I did as a teen. I totally didn't just sit in my room and read books and play video games. I don't know what you're talking about. I like, I like to push joggers into the harbor. So this girl comes up to us, swinging her purse, yelling about how she was going to call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. This guy was a douche. Uh, she actually hit my friend, and he said it hurt a lot, so I guess she really was mad, not just playing. But she kept swinging, and soon enough she lost her balance and fell into the harbor all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh and fished her out, and her phone got soaked so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. She kind of became my girlfriend after that, and we've been on and off for about a year, so it's pretty serious. Though about five months ago, she tried to break up with me, like, for real, and geez, you ever just get so mad you just want to, like, kill somebody? Look at this dude's fucking face. <laughs> Threaten him. <laughs> I kind of feel like killing someone right now. I never feel that way, no. Oh yeah, all the time. What's wrong with you? Smile and pretend he didn't just say that. don't even know what to go with. Okay, um... I'm not going the threaten route, because this dude seems a little off. I'm actually going to go with my route. I'm just going to smile and pretend he didn't say it. <laughs> just hope the conversation ends eventually. I knew you'd get me. We understand each other. Somebody trying to break your heart, that changes a person. Makes them want to do things they never thought they'd want to do. I honestly could have killed that woman. Anyway, she's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for them. This guy... Okay, but I don't know if I'm, like, into that stuff, so I might just wind up on a bus to New York or something instead. I've always wanted to go there. <laughs> Get out of the That's interesting. Oh, ah, what a... Alright, so I've got keen eye and book smart options now. Do you love her enough to make this work? Have you thought about seeing a therapist? I'm gonna go that route. I mean, y'all, seriously, if you need therapy, reach out to somebody. Um, it's, it's done wonders for me, honestly. Uh, yeah, what is wrong with you just keeps coming up as an option. Maybe it would help if you talked with someone about these feelings. Someone professional? I'm not licensed or anything, but it seems like you might have a personality disorder. It might be worth looking into. <laughs> nah, I don't need to do that kind of stuff. Bus strangers are the best therapists. I feel a lot better after talking to you. 
I slept through, dude. Anyways, where'd you say you were headed? I didn't. Scarlet Hollow. Just a small town, you probably haven't heard of it. Uh, maybe I get some info on it about the place. Oh, the Holler, huh? That's what they call the hollows up in the mountains, you know? I heard a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the holler, you see? And there's always a job listing or two on the board around here. I've never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are, thanks. But my buddies got desperate enough to try it. I haven't heard from them in a while, now that I think about it. I should see if they're on Facebook, see how they're doing up there. Hope they didn't die. Ha 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 ha. He looks back at his phone for once focused on something other than you. Oh, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. Hope you don't get too bored without me around to talk to. Here, I have something for you. A stranger rifles through his pack before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. They're boiled peanuts. I got them at a gas station a few buses back. I noticed you hadn't eaten much, so I figured you could use them more than me. She thanks now. Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Tip, sometimes picking a dialogue option establishes new facts about who you are. Okay. Nice, I love boiled peanuts. Take the peanuts. No thanks. Screw you and screw your peanuts. I'm actually allergic to peanuts. Eat the peanuts. Uh, I'm just gonna take them. Thanks. You're welcome. And with that, I leave you safe travels, friend. Just like that, the stranger is gone. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next stop, Scarlet Hollow, end of the line. Almost there. The bus finally comes to a stop. Its brakes squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. The sign at least reads bus station, but calling it, that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though, for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as a road, let alone a bus, that drives on its that drives on it every week. The driver quickly shuts the door behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you in this place behind. Hey, Tamaris, welcome back. Uh, there are some content warnings. Apparently, this game gets like real serious. Uh, I'm only playing episode one of it. Uh, hey, Hall. You instantly recognize the worn young woman from the few public photos of her Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha, and she looks annoyed to be here. Aren't we all? Offer her your boiled peanuts as a condolence. Looks like somebody needs a hug. Hey, Tabitha. Give her your condolences. Remain silent. <laughs> Want some peanuts? I got them from the bus. You hold out the dripping bag, offering it to your cousin. What? Put those away. Why would I want your wet peanuts? Now come on, let's go. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. <laughs> You follow her, clambering into the dusty relic. The sickening dripping sound of the peanuts. It doesn't make much it doesn't take much driving before the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. Tip. Dialogue options labeled explore can usually be taken without advancing the story. They can impact relationships and unlock additional story paths, so choose carefully. Uh, so we can dive into stuff without going further. How are you holding up? I guess we're both members of the Dead Moms Club now, huh? Ugh, that's a rough way to lead. Uh, so, the funeral. 
I can't believe we've never actually met before this. How you holding up? Fine. <laughs> Are you sure you seem tense? You shouldn't bottle your grief like that. You know you can talk to me, right? I lost my mom too. Okay, but if that ever changes... Phew, good to hear. Uh -huh. I feel like the, you seem tense. <laughs> Not ever a good thing to actually say, probably. Are you sure you're alright? You seem tense. You know, you can talk to me, right? I went through something similar when my own mom passed. So it all, that was sort of limited in options because it kind of lumped two of the options together into one. She tenses up even more at the mention of your mom before letting out a heavy sigh. Maybe it's a sore spot for her. You quickly apologize. I'm sorry, I know it's probably not what you're looking to hear right now. Look, I appreciate your concern, but I'm fine, really. Can't believe we've never met before this. Yep, you have your mom to thank for that. Or had, I guess. That was unnecessary. Is there bad, bad blood between us? I wish I'd known about you. Ha, oh, yeah, dead mom's club. <laughs> should I just go the morbid route? I feel like maybe my character should lean morbid. Because I feel like this game's going to get kind of tough. And brain sort of likes to make light of tough situations and hide behind humor. Not a great coping mechanism, by the way, but it gets me through. Um, so, okay, we're going to go that route. <laughs> Your cousin stares straight ahead, her expression icy. So the funeral, it's on Sunday, right? Yep. Like I told you. Have you worked out all the details yet? Hmm. Mm hmm. Taking care of it. Don't need any help. Remain silent. You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases up the steep mountain road. It's like how the house is just sort of leaning. And here it is, the Scarlet Estate. Though it's seen better days, its crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Someone used to cramp wait, someone used to cramp apartments in gray cities. This is making you feel awkward. Just the story or uh, your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning beneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you. A jarring blend of opulence and ruin. As you stare at it, perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something you should have been left to rot a long, long time ago. Uh, oh yeah, some of the text options are a little... not great. As soon as you enter, you're hit with a blast of dusty air. Everything in this room has been here for much longer than you've been alive. Each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear doors creak on their hinges and the aches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Uh, welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen. And hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. Architecture reminds me of the Biltmore Estate. Cool, thanks. So you live here. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Why? 
This place is falling apart. I thought y'all were loaded. Can't you afford to fix this dump? Remain silent. I'm gonna go with the book smart option. The architecture here is breathtaking. Uh, Chateau-esque style, reminiscent of the Biltmore Estate. Color me marginally impressed. I didn't have you pegged as cultured. Believe it or not, this estate actually predates the Biltmore by nearly three decades. It used to be the crown jewel of the region, but times change when the attentions of the masses are ever so fickle. Shall we begin the tour? Follow me. You put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor, and you do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janie. I wouldn't recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ears off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. I got a cat, too. I want to pet the cat. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. Oh, and you can also access the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Tip, some of the explore options prevent you from ta taking others, so choose carefully. That makes sense. Someone cleans this place. This place is nasty. It's nice. It's perfect. Awesome. I love PB&J. Is there somewhere in town to buy food? What if I want ice cream? All right, what's next? Uh, is there somewhere in town to buy food? I might want to eat something other than PB&J this week. Is there somewhere in town we can get some groceries? Well, aren't you fancy? Yeah, there's a general store. There's also a diner. I usually order my food in bulk online, though, so I wouldn't be... So I won't be going with you. Uh... general store how very folksy but i'm your guest oh i didn't actually budget for groceries this week sweet thanks let's get this conversation up. cool good talk uh yeah let's just move on all right what's next on the tour bathroom follow me great it's been hours since i've gone as the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Look at it! That's so freaking cute! Uh, is that your cat? Pet the cat. Leave the cat be. I'm gonna pet the cat. I'm probably gonna get hurt. Now. Before following... <laughs> Before following your cousin down the hall, you decide to pet the cat. She bites you, hard, and hisses violently. Tabitha sighs. <laughs> As you've now learned, you should not pet Frofro. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. We'll love each other someday, Frofro. Come on, the bathroom awaits. Oh, now I want the talk to cat or talk to animal options. I could have talked to Frofro. You once again follow Tabitha through a long and dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights it'll get easier to navigate these spaces, but for the time being, you feel lucky to have not fallen through the floors. Guest guest bathroom. There's a T at the end of that word. Not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must. Do what you must if you must. <laughs> yeah, Fro Fro probably would say fuck. That's true. It is a nasty, wretched bathroom. Piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room, and mystery stains paint the floor. Fancy. This place is fucking gross. Who exactly uses this bathroom? Wait, are you sure this toilet works? This is the worst bathroom I've ever seen. I like this bathroom. Why? I like the one where it's like, just lie. Never mind, I don't need to go. Lift the toilet seat. Uh, make sure the toilet works. Uh, yeah, why wouldn't it? The water bill's been paid. Therefore, the toilet works. Now do your business so we can move on. Ew, it's crusty. Oh. 
That's the spirit. Uh, who exactly uses this? Guests. Is there going to be something in the toilet? Ew. That is so gross. Bugs skitter from the bowl as you lift the seat. Alright, the character said they've not gone to the bathroom in hours. <sighs> Why is this a tough decision? Right? Okay. I mean, yeah, you gotta go, you gotta go, right? A toilet is a toilet. Sure, it could be cleaner, but your business needs doing, and this is as good a place as any. You do what you must and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Next up, guest bedroom. Last stop on the tour, follow me. Tabitha's just a ray of sunshine. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. My bags are gone. No? Okay. I thought my bags were gonna be gone. Ooh, I like the creepy noises. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot, it has it all. A week of sleeping in this place might give you a permanent lung damage. Uh, sleeping there would be a no. Yeah. This is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh. I had Janie wash them last week. I had to endure a half hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you'd better be grateful. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang your clothes up, but you can use the dresser. It should be empty. There's a little dust. Alright, I want to know what's with the boxes. There's a lot of stuff packed up here. What's with all the boxes? Old family stuff. Do you need help moving them? Tabitha eyes you up and down for a moment. No. Uh, who used to? Who used to sleep here? When? This house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here. And now you'll sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. <laughs> I like Tabitha. Guess I'll get settled then. Follow me, I'll take you back to the foyer so you can collect your belongings. This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties. So you duties. <laughs> so you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Tip, some dialogue options will open additional conversation paths, some right away, others down the line. There's bad blood between uh, between our moms. There doesn't have to be between us. Is there a library in the estate? That'd be nice. Where are you going? What am I supposed to do while you're gone? Are you sure you can't take the day off? Did I do something wrong? Are you sure? Yada yada. There's lots of options. I get at that. But I, I wonder how many of the multiple options don't just circle back to the same thing. All right. There's been... I don't know what happened when my mom left, but that was nothing to do with me. You asked me to come here, but you're acting all pissed off that I actually came. Can't we just start fresh, now that it's just us? Look, I'm sorry I've been testy since you've gotten here, but you haven't exactly been easy. I'm under a lot of pressure right now. Just stay out of my hair, okay? I have work to do. Is there a library? I couldn't bring too many books with me, and I'm not sure what else I should do with my time. There is, but as I said earlier, most of this building is off-limits. And the library is in the West Wing, which is extra off-limits. You're better off heading into town. I'm pretty sure there's a library there. What am I supposed to do when you're gone? 
There's a very demanding job I should be getting back to right now that doesn't include figuring out activities for you to occupy your time with. I'm not your babysitter. Why don't you, I don't know, go walk around in town or something until you get tired. There are historic buildings to look at. I'm sure you'll have a great time. Can you take me into town? You think you can take me into town before you leave? No, it's just down the hill. You can walk there yourself. Fine, then. Uh, yeah, I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. We'll see. There's a lot that needs to get done this week. Cousin leaves through the front door. And now it's just you. You and this sprawling, decrepit estate. All right, now it's just, okay. So I can get a PB&J and settle in the room. Go straight to the forbidden wings of the estate. Might as well head to town. Hmm. I'm not gonna lie, part of me just wants to explore the, don't go here. I mean, I'm very white and this is a horror game, right? So. Uh, that seems like the only option, right? Let's go to the Forbidden Wings. With Tabitha gone, there's no one stopping you from going into the Forbidden Wings of the estate. I want to find that library. <laughs> Except for the locks and chains, sealing them shut. Well, poo. Um... I've been stuck on a bus. I'm probably hungry. Those boiled peanuts are not going to be all that appetizing. Let's go check the PB&Js. Maybe we can find a key there. Haven't had anything to eat all day. The only thing louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and moans of this ancient place. PB&J sounds exactly like what you need to take on the rest of the day. Uh, you head to the kitchen. Uh, just in case anybody's dropping in and lurking, very much appreciate it. Lurkers are always welcome. You don't have to chat if you don't want to, but there are some content warnings for the game. Uh, you're back in the kitchen, ready to craft a beautiful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task, given the state of this place, but the aggressive growls of your stomach outweigh your fear of food poisoning. Uh, to get started, you'll probably need to find some peanut butter, some jelly, bread, plates, and a knife. Approach for a fro. Search the fridge, search the pantry, search the cabinets, check out the garden. Alright, so let's start with the cabinets so we can get a plate to put this shit on. This cabinet must be where Tabitha keeps the dishware and, oddly enough, the utensils. Great. Huh. I'm going to examine the monk. I was blown away at Blowing Rock, North Carolina. It reads, I was blowing away at North Carolina. So your aunt and cousin actually traveled sometimes, even if it was only a few hours from the estate. Maybe you can route your return trip through Blowing Rock. It might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. All right, let's get a plate and a butter knife. All you need now is some actual food. Examine a shot glass. It reads, I survived Deb's 50th. Your aunt's name was Pearl Ann, so this wasn't for her 50th. Uh, from the few stories you've heard from your mom, uh, Pearl Ann wasn't the type to have kitschy friends who gave out themed shot glasses at their birthday parties. Maybe it belongs to Janie. Wait, which one was Janie? Oh, Janie was the cleaner. You imagine she might need an alcoholic beverage to get through cleaning this place, especially with Tabitha's sour face peering over her shoulder. What do we need a bowl for? 
You reach for the bowl, but as you pull it down, a blend of vinegar and dead moth splashes onto you, immediately staining your shirt. On the back of the bowl is a note that reads, Moth Trap, do not touch. Oops. Your shirt is now unpleasantly wet. You'll probably change into something clean before you leave the house. Thanks for that. Close the cabinet. Alright, what's in the pantry? Tabitha sure loves her mac and cheese. Uh, oh, keen eye to look closer. Yeah, we can examine the mac and cheese. We got bread, we got peanut butter. Let's do it closer. You squint into the darkness of the pantry. Behind the molded bread, a single book lies forgotten. A thin layer of dust collected on its cover. You pick it up. You flip to a bookmarked page. Both calf's brain and aspic are unappetizing enough on their own, and you can only imagine how vile the combination of the two would be. What kind of person would call this their favorite food? No wonder your mom ran far, far away from this place. Ew. What? You shut the book and put it back in its place. Grab some bread. You pick up one of the non-moldy loaves of bread. Good option. Great. One step closer to a satisfying snack. All you need now is some jelly and peanut butter. Oh, look, there's peanut butter. The king of nut butters. And only 3% of each jar is mashed up cockroaches. Uh, you pick up a box of Tabitha's mac and cheese. You can't say you've ever seen the brand before. Ew, empty the box and stuff it with a dead mouse on the shelf. That's so gross. Just put it back. Staying away from the mac and cheese with one of your cousin's hard rules, and she already seems to not like you. You put the box back where you found it, reluctant to make things worse than they already are. Close the pantry. You close the pantry door as best you can and turn back to the rest of the kitchen. Hey, Fru-Fru. The cat hisses at you as you draw near, but remains firmly in place. This is clearly Fro-Fro's spot on the counter. Back away. I'm not going to do that again. You back away, try not to make any sudden movements. Alright, fridge. As you approach the fridge, your eyes catch a note taped to the door reading, Janie, stay out, in all caps. Below it, in separate handwriting, are the words, Okie dokie. You open the fridge. You already feel a deep urge to wash your hands, even though you have yet to touch anything under the handle, other than the handle. Uh, examine the old takeout. Ew. You did... Why did you do that? What were you expecting? This takeout container is disgusting. Beyond words, a liquefied mess wholly congealed in its styrofoam shell. You can't even tell what it used to be. <laughs> yeah, the craft mac and cheese. Uh, this substance doesn't just smell bad, it smells ancient. For God's sake, put it back. Oh, there's an eat it option? What the hell? No, put that shit back. Your body reacts before you even register what you're doing, compelled by a deep primal disgust. You shove the container back in the fridge, pushing it into the depths of the shelves and out of your mind. Hopefully you can forget it exists and move on with your life. It's like the green bean casserole. Uh, let's see. I'm going to take the jelly. You reach for one of the unopened jars of grape jelly, carefully checking its expiration date. You breathe a sigh of relief when you realize it's recent. <laughs> This was either purchased specifically for you, or jelly is one of the few things in this kitchen Tabitha actually uses. This is the last ingredient you need to make your PB&J. Time to close this fridge and get to work. Alright, let's make that sandwich. Despite the state of this horrendous kitchen, you have successfully combined your three ingredients to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. 
Congratulations, you can feed yourself. <laughs> a job well done. I got an achievement for that too. Cooking by the book. All of that hassle and it took you less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. Let's look at the garden. This garden was reclaimed by wilderness long ago. It might not be very safe, but who's to stop you from venturing deeper? Okay, let's explore the garden. You wander further into the garden. It's quiet out here. Oh, I can go back and read all of it. Nice. Probably should go ahead and save. I didn't even check all this stuff. Uh... Yeah, let's go back to the kitchen then. Done here. Congratulations. You have eaten and have a full day ahead of you. What do you want to do next? Let's head up to the room. Now that you've finally eaten, the aches and pains of your journey have started to sink deep into your bones. Oh no. You stumble up the stairs to your room. Suitcase and tow, eager to unwind before you face the rest of the day. Like this thoroughly unimpressed portrait. You stand at the entrance to your room. Take a nap, you've earned it. Put your spare clothes in the dresser, check the closet, look out the window, examine the painting on the wall. That already drew my attention, so we're going there first. This must be an old relative of yours, very old, judging by the dates on the inscription. You've never heard of her, but you barely heard anything about your aunt and cousin until a week ago, so that's not really a surprise. Maybe you could ask Tabitha about this Mary Bell Scarlet the next time you see her. That is, if she's actually in the mood for conversation. Mary Bell. Maybe you could ask... Oh, never mind, I don't I'm not gonna reread that. Uh, check the closet. Ew, we got a creepy doll. Shit's gonna go sideways now. You can see why your cousin said you should put your clothes in the dresser instead of this closet. There must be decades of family history stacked up in here. <sighs> Seriously. White people's survival instincts, I swear. Of course, you're sharing a room with a creepy doll. You pick it up to examine it more closely. Its foot reads, Property of Alexandra. No need to carry this around with you. No shit. Leaving that there. You close the closet behind you. Look out the window for something creepy. You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in its heyday. If you owned this place, you'd totally get out there with a shovel and some gardening gloves and whip it into shape. No, I wouldn't. Uh, you'd go out... <laughs> And pull weeds, chop trees, carve topiaries, and do whatever you needed to do to return it to its former glory. And once it was all done, you'd sit by the fountain, which of course would have a little goldfish in it, and drink a floral tea while enjoying the bird song. Well, the second half of that sounds pretty nice. Yeah, you'd definitely do that. Just not right now. Ah. Got a friend. You drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer. A possum lurks within. It is quiet, but angry. Aren't we all? <laughs> I'll print your boy peanuts. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that, <laughs> I'm that awkward person that's just like, peanuts? To everybody. You hold out your still dripping bag of boiled peanuts. <laughs> oh. 
The possum hisses in disgust, stiffens, and begins to drool. Feigning death. <laughs> Me too, little buddy. Me too. You close the drawer, you might as well leave it be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god hey charity water thank you so much for joining us uh we've surpassed the goal i'm i'm very impressed and i'm, I'm so glad to have you all here um this <laughs> there is some content warnings for this game apparently uh i will give you all that but uh thank you all so much for stopping by and thank you for the follow um i hope you all are doing well this evening Uh, you open the top drawer next. It's empty. It's a good a place as you'll find to put your clothes. <clears throat> Based on the state of the house, you wonder if you'd have been better off keeping your clothes in your nice clean bag, but there's no going back now. Right, let's go ahead and take a nap. I don't, I don't feel like I would be comfortable sleeping in this house, to be honest. You immediately collapse into the bed. You're tired enough that being alone in a strange new place won't stop you from passing out. To be fair, I would sleep wherever, but it's not safe. <laughs> or so you thought. You cough as a small cloud of dust rises up from the mattress. Ew. These sheets might be fresh, but everything beneath them might have been around to see the dawn of civilization. That's gross. You try to settle in, but the bed is lumpy in strange places, and you can feel the springs pressing through the fabric. <laughs> you might be tired, but you're far from tired enough to get in more than a few minutes of uncomfortable napping. Alright, that's enough. It doesn't seem like there's much else for you to do here right now. Might as well head to town. Now that you're settled in, there's not much left for you to... For you to do here other than head out and explore the town you do just that so let's go visit the town before leaving the house you ri you rinse off and change into a clean shirt you're not about to meet new people coated in vinegar and dead moths excellent choice if you'd have known you'd wind up having to walk all the way back to town, you probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop, especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. If only you could wipe the slate between the two of you clean and bury some of the tension through, uh, though maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. Uh, then again, maybe it's the perfect time. Uh, it's really pretty out here. Continue down the path. Finally, you made it back to town. There's our general store. And the library. The hauler, as that guy on the bus called it, has probably seen better days. That guy on the bus. The guy on the bus told you everything you need to know about this place right off the bat. It still has the feeling of an idyllic country town, but its sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are boarded up, their windows dusty with age. A chill breeze sweeps down the lane, and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peering into a grave. <laughs> Doggo! Gretchen, come back. Quit that. Sorry about that. Gretchen can be very slippery when she wants to be. She loves to get loose and cause havoc. Ha! <laughs> Mothman shirt. Nice. Uh, pet the dog, the pug. She's so cute. Tell me more about this wonderful creature. I don't do too well with dogs. Is that supposed to be a dog? <laughs> Introduce yourself. It made sense. Uh, you would leave the town with the possum. <laughs> Look at the dog's face. Tell me more about this wonderful creature. 
I am in love with this dog and wish to know everything there is to know about her. <laughs> Look at the dog, though. Gladly. Her favorite food is cheese whiz. Her favorite toy is an old sock I sewed to look like a squirrel. And her favorite show is Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> Sometimes I leave it on in the background while I'm working to give her something to do. She'll actually sit in her little bed and watch it, like an old lady with her programs. How'd you two meet? <laughs> That's so cute. How'd you first meet her? My mom was a vet, and she used to visit the regional animal shelter on weekends to do checkups. Right? That is adorable. When I was really young, I'd go with her to volunteer, which really meant I'd do a little bit of manual labor, then play with the dogs for the rest of the day. One weekend, believe it or not, someone dropped off this little one-year-old pug that outgrown its cute puppy stage. People suck. Don't get a puppy if you don't want a dog. When I went to clean her kennel, she looked up at me with those big, watery, nervous eyes, wagging her entire butt, and whimpering like no one had ever loved her before. I couldn't not fall head over heels, you know? <laughs> My parents were rugged mountain folks, so they weren't big on toy breeds, and at first, they refused to even consider adopting poor Gretchen. But lucky Gretchen. Uh, but I kept visiting every week, and soon enough, they caved and let me take her home. My dad still wasn't too keen on her at first, but soon enough, he was taking her out on the trails like she was a hound dog. Oh, with keen eye, you can't help but notice she's been talking about her parents in the past tense. Uh, sorry for talking your ear off, but I can't help it. I could prattle on about Gretchen for hours. How about I introduce myself so it, uh, so you won't be so nervous? I'm Stella. It's not often I see a strange face up in the holler. Every now and then there's a new crop of uh, coal folks, but you don't look dusty enough for that. Dot dot dot. You aren't in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet Funeral? <laughs> Offer the boiled peanuts. Uh, introduce myself. Hi, I'm Hall. You must be Tabby's cousin, right? That's the only person I can think of who would come to town for the funeral. How's she holding up? To be honest, I've been a little worried about her all alone up in that big house. I'm sorry, did you say Tabby? Did I hear you right? I can't imagine Tabitha ever going by something so bubbly. She did back when I knew her better. It's been a while. I hope she's okay. Uh, I'm worried about her too. She's always been a little rough around the edges, but I figured she'd probably be having a rough go of things. She and her mom were really close. Uh, to think she's been up in that old mansion all by herself. It'll probably be good for her now that you're staying there, even if she doesn't think so herself. How long have you known her? Oh, quite a long time. The town's really small, so everyone's everybody's known everybody else as far back as they can remember. Tabby and I got a little close when we were both in school's production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. I was Puck, and she was Mustard Seed. As you might have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. Aww. But then, she graduated, and that was that. Oh, if you just got to town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to the diner for a coffee, and they've got amazing biscuits. My treat.
This little place is bumping and pumping. The pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food hangs heavy in the air, in contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate. The diner is filled with the comforting din of human life. All of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Hall. What are you looking at? Quietly slide into the nearest booth. Uh, yeah, awkwardly just... You slide into the nearest booth pretending that you didn't notice everyone in the diner gawking at you like they'd just seen Bigfoot. No need to be so shy. They don't meet many strangers. It's kind of a big deal when someone new wanders into town. <laughs> I like little Gretchen just peeking up over the table. Especially since, well, they probably all know what you're here for, and by extension, who you're related to. Even if you don't know anybody, it's not uh, easy keeping secrets in a town this size. All right, with my keen eye, as you settle into the booth, you can't help but pick up some of the murmurs of conversation around you. Listen in. Stella puts Gretchen, pets Gretchen while you take a quick look around the diner. At the counter, two policemen and a woman you assume to be the owner shoot sidelong glances in your direction while whispering to each other. That must be Vivian's kid. Never thought she'd actually... We'd actually meet them. Looks so much like her. Oh yes, those ours, those eyes are unmistakable. That haunted look. I always thought it'd go away once she finally got out of this town, but I guess unhappiness was baked into her DNA. Mm-hmm. A young woman with her syrup-stained child sit at the table across from you. Mommy, who's that? Don't stare, Tulip. That must be Miss Tabitha's cousin. Ooh, so that's why they look so sad. I would look sad too if I had to have Miss Tabitha as a cousin. <laughs> Do you think Tabitha's cousin is mean too? Oh my gosh. I don't know. I'll find out next time I go visit Miss Tabitha. Are you going to finish your pancakes? They're almost cold, sweet pea, and we've got to get home to help Daddy. In the far back corner, a man sits alone at a small table, sipping coffee and reading a paper. Sigh. Why are the strangers who wander into town never gorgeous blonde ladies of an appropriate age? Why is it always coal boys, punks, and whippersnappers? I hope I'm the whippersnapper. I don't know, I might be a cool punk. Lastly, a group of coal miners sit hunched around the corner booth, uh, readily scarfing down heaping plates of food. Uh, what do you think? Another young and looking for mine work? No way. Clearly don't got the stomach for it. That's gotta be the boss cousin. There's that funeral this week, if I'm remembering right, for old Miss Pearl Ann. May she rot in peace. Oh, let the lady rest, Lloyd. One shouldn't speak ill of the dead, no matter how foul they were. <laughs> Especially before they've been so much as laying to rest. Jeez. Uh, yeah, kids go straight for the neck. Just. Uh, if you'd have been around in her heyday, you'd be speaking ill too, Tommy. He's right. Nastiest woman I ever met. That Tabitha is a blessing compared to her. Curse the whole lot of them. May every scarlet burn in hell. That's enough of that. Hey, Stella. I went ahead and fixed you up a coffee. Uh, they gracefully place a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Aw, oh, shucks. Thanks, Avery. And here's some bacon for the little lady. Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. Anything for you? <laughs> I can offer him... <laughs> I'm really just a one-trick pony. Where it's just, oh, you want some peanuts? Could I have a biscuit and a coffee, please? I heard they were really good. Oh, Stella's winking at me. Best in the county. 
Avery pours the fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. They linger after pouring your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and I'm uh, sorry for your loss. Before you have the chance to respond, they're gone. Glad you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. Anyways, the funeral is not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. There's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids, but I do it every month anyway. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. That should be right after the funeral, too, so it'll be a special occasion. <laughs> Book smart. I'm sorry, did you say reading adventure? Potluck like a church thing? Cool, I mean, those really strike my fancy. I'm sorry, did you just say the library has a reading adventure? Haha, <laughs> yeah, Oscar's all about keeping things on theme, so this month it's a bunch of ghost stories. Ooh, we like ghost stories. I think he's calling it Spooky Boots. That was a reach. You, you know, like how a ghost would say it? Oh my god, that's perfect. Oh neat. Never mind, it's not exciting anymore. Sounds like it's for babies. Remains out. Okay, that's perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> cool, we should check it out this week. But that's really just an afternoon. Any idea what you want to do for the rest of the week? Uh, do you have something in mind? How's the general selection of the library? What's it to you? No clue. I'm sure I'll be able to occupy myself. Probably just do what I can to support time with you through this. Do you have something in mind? Something's telling me this is a loaded question. You've got something in mind. Hehe, <laughs> was I being that obvious? <laughs> My job means I spend a lot of time in the woods with a camera, and it's always better when someone else is there too. Before Stella can finish, Avery returns, biscuit in tow. Here's your biscuit. When he says it's on the house, she sends her condolences. Um, thanks, it looks great. Thanks, Avery, it looks great. You pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. Fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. It's delicate and fluffy. It nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth emanates from its surface. Oh, this biscuit sounds good. You take a bite. It melts in your mouth, as if it was nothing but butter suspended in a thin matrix of dough. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. Just, whoa. Whoa, this is a really good biscuit. Wow. I'm so glad you like it. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So, has Stella mentioned she's famous? Haha. -ha. Oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're not going to go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm going to do it for you. It sounds like how I am with my friends. Stella sighs. <laughs> I'm a YouTuber. Wait, what? What kind of videos do you do? Wow, that's rad. Okay, how does that make you money? Uh, you and everyone else. Uh, let's see, what kind of videos do you do? She hunts cryptids. happen to have a friend named Cryptid, by the way, if anybody's lurking. Uh, let's do a shout out for Cryptid. Uh, Cryptid is a streamer and writer, dungeon master, spice maker. The Etsy shop takes you to Cryptid, the Cryptid Kitchen. Uh, they're all around, probably one of the few humans I know that is constantly busier than me. But uh, y'all should definitely check out Krypton.
might get a little stale, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll be stale. It just won't not be funny. Oh, no. No, no. No, no. <laughs> Alright, uh, you should really check out our channel hall, it's amazing. Uh, wait, how did you know my name? Oh, sorry, it's just that most people in town know about you. Sorry, I'm sure that must seem creepy. Ah, uh, well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. The hauler's a small place, everybody knows everybody, and that includes extended family. Oh no, who's been talking about me? I've never even met this side of the family. What would they even talk about? Excuse me. Your aunt must have been getting it from somewhere. She was always on about something you were up to. Oh, uh, oops, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said anything. What matters is that now people can meet the real you, so it doesn't matter what Pearl Ann may or may not have said. I do love this music, by the way. Uh, is it too loud? I don't. I don't know what y'all are hearing. I hope y'all would tell me if it's too loud. Uh, yeah, you can always make a good first impression and wipe the slate clean with the whole town. Uh, oh God, what was she saying about me? Perfect on your end. Cut. Ah, oh, jeez. Look, I'm sorry. I said anything. Baby girl. Hey, don't worry about it. Pearl Ann was a gossip and would do this sort of thing with everyone. Spreading weird little rumors about folks was kind of her trademark. Anyways, uh, weren't we in the middle of talking about Stella's illustrious YouTube career? Sigh. I guess we were, weren't we? I think the best video to start with would be that river one. Not the lake, but you know, the controversial one. Oh yeah, the Catawaba River Runner. I didn't expect much out of that footage at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video by far. <laughs> so the River Runner is a cryptid that's only known from a single sighting. Two Boy Scouts thought they saw something big and weird in the Catawaba River, and that's all I had to go on. But then I wound up catching this on camera. Stella pulls out her phone and shows you a clip of something in a river. Keen eye and book smart, from the shape of its body to the little pixelated ears sticking out of its head, you can definitely tell that it's definitely some variety of big cat. Though they've long been considered extinct in the region, mountain lions used to live in these parts. Who's to say this isn't part of a remnant population? Interesting. So that combo allowed me to solve this. Some folks said it was a beaver, but if that was the case, it'd be at least twice the size of any beaver I've seen. I also had people saying it was a dog, or even a capybara, that must have escaped from a local wildlife sanctuary. <laughs> I'm still not sure what it was, and I'm the one who saw the thing with my own two eyes. Should I just be a know-it-all? I mean, that is the combo of traits that I went with, so... It's a mountain lion. You can even kind of make out its little kitty cat ears. And this used to be part of their natural range. Maybe you're looking at part of a remnant population. No, no way. I did a whole video on the Appalachian mountain lion myth and found Jack Squat. And there's no reason one would be swimming in the river like this. They're not fans of water. And the body is too long. No way. Personally, I'm a fan of the capybara theory. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries are missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic animals as pets. Kind of a sewer gator type situation. Haha, uh -huh, exactly. Some exotic pet owner set it free and now it will forever roam the Catawaba confusing Boy Scouts and YouTube commenters for years to come. So, speaking of things to go around town, I was actually planning on filming this week's video tonight. I was wondering if maybe you'd want to come along. Uh, it's a pretty easy one this week. We wouldn't even have to camp anywhere. I'm going to go after the... Wait, no spoilers. Whoops, sorry Avery. 
It's okay. I should probably get back to it instead of standing around chatting with friends. See you all around. Now that the coast is clear, I'm going after Skunk Ape. <laughs> Skunk Ape. <laughs> Booksmart does that live in Florida. But doesn't Skunk Ape live in Florida? That's a Pokemon. Oh, you know your stuff, don't you? I knew you'd make a great partner. It mostly lives in Florida, but they've been sightings as far north as Virginia. That's a Pokemon. <laughs> oh, I love it. While I was doing research for last week's video, I came across a report where a lady from a town over claimed to have seen one on her deck playing tug-of-war with her dog. And as I leave no stone unturned, I decided it was worth investigating. So what do you say? Want to tag along? Hold the camera for me while I narrate, <laughs> narrate against a darkening sky, that sort of thing. Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> that depends. Will Gretchen be there? Uh, absolutely. I guess by better judgment, yes. Are you nuts? It's not like I have anything else going on. No, remain silent. <sighs> hmm. What do you think? Tipsy, which one should I go with? Against my better judgment, yes. I will follow a girl I just met into the woods at night to chase after dangerous beasts. Sounds fun. Haha, <laughs> when you put it that way, it sure does sound like this is a bad idea. But trust me, we'll have a great time. It's been a while since I've had anyone besides Gretchen out there with me. This is going to be a lot of fun. I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies of mine back in middle school, so it's kind of like a blast from the past. Me and Kanika and Reese uh, running around in the woods, uh, flipping over rocks and bothering salamanders. Our videos were terrible, but we had a lot of fun and that's all that mattered to us. You know, that gets me thinking. I wonder if they'd be down to come along with us, get the old gang back together. Though I guess Kanika has to close out the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she's a no-go. But Reese, I think there's a decent chance we could get him to come out of his hidey hole. If he's up for it. Do you mind if I make a quick call? Stella pulls out her phone and dials it, waiting while it rings. Reese, dude, what's up? Feels like it's been forever. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come up by or... Okay, if you're really sure, but if you change your mind... Oh, I was just calling to ask if you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. I met somebody cool in town today. They're Tabitha's cousin. I know, yeah, just here for the week. Anyway, we're going out to look for Skunk Ape. We could take the easier trails if that would help. Dang, man, that sounds awful. I hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week and we can have a more low-key hang. How's that? Haha, <laughs> yeah, I'll bring them. Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. <laughs> Did he ask you to bring me to his house? Why? He's excited to meet you, of course. I think you'll find most folks in town are. Uh, are you okay? Me? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm more worried about Reese. He's had a lot going on in the past, gosh, 10 years or so, but I feel like he's gotten a lot worse recently. I can't remember the last time I saw him leave his house. Oh well, it's not my place to talk about, really. I just got a little excited thinking about hanging, or having him along again. He's hilarious. You'd love him. Hey, co-op trio. Welcome in. Greetings and good evening. How are we doing? What? Uh, there is a content warning for this game, by the way, just in case if you're 
uh, hiding away for a bit. I'm probably about to wrap, actually. Um, we are... Uh, I'm doing pretty good. We are raising money for uh, Charity Water currently. Um, I will have the ad... the uh, Not the ad. The link active for the next couple of weeks through all of November. Uh, this is probably going to be my last stream for November. For I'm going to take a couple of weeks off and work on some projects. But... Um, We've been having a pretty good stream. We had some Fall Guys. I read some of the stuff I've wrote. If you want to check the VOD for... Oh, bless you. Uh, if you want to check the VOD, if you're interested in hearing anything that I've read, uh, that I've written, I just read two of my stories. Uh, because we met our goal for the $100 today. Um, actually, they kind of blew it out of the water the last time I looked. Or, uh, goodness gracious, more than doubled it. That's amazing. Uh, uh, Fall Guys was good. I did not do very well. Uh, I st that's what I always say. I feel like I started really good in Fall Guys, and I've gotten worse the more I play. But uh, I had a friend playing with me, and they made it to the final round twice, but didn't make the ground. Like I, I don't know what it is. Like the, yeah, right. The more I play it, the worse I get. But I mean, it's fun. It's one of those just fun things to. Never got a crown. I've gotten one. One time at the very beginning of season two. Yeah. I got one crown. <laughs> I have no idea. It's clipped out there somewhere. Uh, but, oh my gosh. That was stressful. I've never even gotten close since. Uh, he's hilarious. You'd love him. Uh, we should swing by his place sometime this week. Uh, haven't I met enough people already? That's a mood and a half right there. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't know how much I should commit to doing this week. That's fair, but if you find you have the time, he'd love to meet you, and I think you'd get along. But we can talk about making friends sh friendship plans later. For now, we've got Skunk Ape to find. To hunt. Uh, so we should probably head out if we want to make it up to the mountain before it's too dark. Come on, let's blow this popsicle stand. You pause before getting up. Maybe it's time to make a good first impression. After all, it seems everyone in town has heard awful things about you from your now-deceased aunt. Leave a tip. Leave a generous tip. You can't afford to leave a tip. Don't leave a tip. You didn't even spend any money. Uh, I didn't spend any money, so we're gonna just leave a tip. <laughs> you reach into your pocket and pull out a single crumpled dollar bill and a quarter. <laughs> as long as you don't get sick of peanut butter and jelly, your meals will be free while you're here. Share the wealth while you're while you've got it. <laughs> you think to yourself, dollar drama. You leave the money on the table and follow Stella out of the diner. Uh, it hadn't been very cold when you first arrived in town, but as the sun dips closer and closer to the horizon, a chill descends upon the hollow, and you see your situation with renewed clarity. I love the art and the music in this. It's really nicely put together so far. I feel like it's probably going to take like a super, super tight turn for the creepy, like any minute. I feel like I should probably wrap stream before I get too far into this. Uh, you're in a new place, far from civilization, and the people you know, following somebody you just met into a dark forest in search of monsters. See? I mean, that pretty well tells you what's going on. Uh, and this game is listed as a horror game. Uh, with, as we shared a second ago, quite a few content warnings. Uh, you feel... More alive than you've been in years. Strangely calm. Tense. Unsettled. Nothing. Strangely calm, I think, would be. You feel strangely calm. The setting sun paints beautiful colors in the sky. Fresh air fills your lungs. And pleasant songs of crickets trill around you as night descends. This is where you're supposed to be. With Stella by your side, a sweet smile on her face... And Gretchen, plodding along in front without a care in the world. Look at this dog. Look at Gretchen. 
Is Gretchen not freaking adorable? Gotta love this brisk fall weather. This past summer was the hottest on record. Since last year, at least. <laughs> you know how it is these days. Each summer is the hottest yet until the next summer, which always finds a way to be so much worse. And it's just nice to feel a chill in the air and see the leaves change, like normalcy is restored, if only for a moment. Sorry if that was a bit of a bummer. We should talk about something more fun, like skunk apes. Are you really expecting to find anything? Do you ever hunt things that aren't cryptids, like ghosts and whatnot? Has anything bad ever happened on these hikes? What's the weirdest thing you've seen out here, other than cryptids? Yeah, what's the weirdest thing you've seen out here? Oh gosh, that's a good one. Let me think. Well, there's always the deer I saw stealing baby birds out of a nest and eating them. That was pretty messed up. What is it? Okay, seriously. What is it with horror stuff set in the woods and a creepy deer? Every single time there's a creepy deer. What? What is with that trope? Where did that come from? There's always a creepy deer. Now we got a deer eating birds. But I think most people know about that these days. I've seen tons of videos of other deer doing it, so I'm not sure if it counts as weird anymore. Oh, Tetanus Lake. That's definitely the weirdest. It was a 5 foot deep, 30 foot wide pile of old cans and bottles and assorted garbage with grass and trees growing on it, so you could barely tell it was there until you stepped on it. You were listening to a horror podcast with a man-eating deer, right? There's always creepy deers. Deer? Deer is plural? There's not an S there? It was practically solid ground with how much it had been compressed, but you could still fall through if you weren't careful, hence the name. Uh, better be up on your shots if you want to mess around in there. It was all stuff from the 50s too, which was super neat. I salvaged a few bottles that I keep on my dresser as a little souvenir. Are you expecting to find anything? Not here. What are the chances we actually run into a skunk ape in just one night of filming? That's fair. We are hunting a creature that stayed hidden from humans long enough to gain a mythic reputation. What are the odds of something like that popping out to star on my little YouTube channel? But hey, the chances are never zero, right? Uh, like ghosts and whatnot? Demons, werewolves, that sort of thing? Yeah, for sure. I used to go after all sorts of spooky stuff. I never had much luck though, especially when it came to ghosts. Back when I first started doing solo videos, I'd go into all sorts of old abandoned buildings hoping I'd stumble across some sort of activity. But nothing ever happened. It was always just me and my camera in an old house getting worked up over a gust of wind or a creaky floorboard. When all's said and done, I've just been a lot luckier with cryptids. I want to believe in ghosts so bad, and I can't rule out the possibility that there really are true hauntings out there. But if there are, I sure as heck haven't seen any myself. Werewolves, I kind of lump in with cryptids. I'd be shocked if there were actually were people out there who turned into animals. But werewolf lore lines up pretty well with the great beasts genre of cryptid. As for demons, I don't know. Honestly, don't even want to consider the possibility that they exist. Because if they really are out there, geez, a lot of folks are doomed to an eternity of flames. So let's hope all that's just bunk, am I right? What about aliens? What do you think about aliens? Don't even get me started. Did you see those UFO videos the government declassified? Aliens are definitely real. And they have absolutely visited Earth. Like, I believe in aliens way more than I believe in cryptids. You don't see me hunting aliens out here because we know they're real. <laughs> I like how the dog is just like prancing back and forth. Uh, heck yeah, aliens are real. Nice, I knew we had a connection. 
I know somebody who knows somebody who heard a story from this trucker in Fayetteville. His truck stopped in the middle of the road, just shut down completely, even though he had a full tank of gas. And suddenly, it looks like daylight outside. He could see cows out in the fields, birds in the sky, then the metallic-like egg thing appeared floating in front of his truck. He passed out, and when he woke up, he was missing one of his pinkies. It was like it had never even been there. It was just smooth skin where a pinky should be. I know it's a second-hand source, but there's plenty more like it. And if they are true... I'm convinced. What if he just denied? Maybe it was just sleep paralysis. Could have been the government. Fuck it, I'm convinced. Makes sense to me. For sure, and even if that's one... If this one's hogwash, there's a lot of evidence out there. Anything bad ever happened out here? You know, just curious. Let me think. There was that time back in early high school when Reese fell down a cliff, but he was fine. We had some folks from town rig up a pulley to get him out of the ravine, and his leg only took a couple of months to heal. All in all, not too bad. Though I guess there was also the time I was out here alone and kind of got stuck in a cave. I was getting great footage of what I thought was a family of wampus cats, but I wasn't able to wiggle my way back out. Turns out the wampus cats were actually skunks who very much did not appreciate me blocking the entrance to their hidey hole. And instead of running for help, Gretchen just sat outside bored to tears. Lassie, she is not. It took about an hour to get loose, which was pretty intense, but a few tomato juice baths later I was right as rain. So it could have been a lot worse. Oh, and there was time I accidentally stumbled into old Duke's property and nearly got my head shot off. But that happens to everybody sooner or later. I'd barely count it. The gun happy nuts. So yeah, these hikes aren't all that dangerous, all things considered. Did you hear that? Oh, calm down, Gretchen, you old mutt. Speaking of guys with guns. Same to you, Stella. You're always jumping at nothing, girl. Sorry for getting spooked, Duke. I thought you were... Some creatures of darkness? Nah, girl, you're just old Duke. Now, what the hell are you looking for way out here? Skunk ape. Sorry I asked. And who's this you've suckered into coming with you? Wait a tick, you aren't. Is that... Yep. I see. Welcome to the holler. My condolences. I'll keep you in my player. Prayers. Players. Another stranger, another opportunity for a salty introduction. I'm offering him my peanuts. You hold out the slippery bag in front of Duke. It's grown quite fragrant since you first put it in your rucksack, like the scent of old beer. But you're pretty sure that's what it's supposed to smell like. Boiled peanuts from your backpack. No, I'm all set, thank you. Now both of y'all head on back to town, you hear? It's best you steer well clear of this area tonight. I'm out dealing with my own critter and won't be too appreciative if a couple of fools with a camera scare away the more sensitive wildlife. What are you hunting tonight? Something tall and hairy? Something musky? You see something like that recently? What you like to know? You never could stay in your business, Stella Richmond. Put that damn camera down. Aw, oh, come on, Duke. Maybe I could help out. I'm pretty good at tracking. You know I learned from the best. That you did, but I have yet to see a shred of proof that you listened to any of it. The way you tromp around the woods at night yelling about chungabungas or what have you. Something's been getting at my chickens. I've lost three this week and can't afford to lose any more than that. I'm so sorry to hear that, but uh, I wonder if Skunk Ape has a taste for chicken. Now see, this is why I don't come to you about these things. It ain't no Skunk Ape, whatever the hell that is. I know exactly what this is, but I know you won't believe me if I tell you. Oh, dude, you don't think it's... I do, actually. It's those damn mountain lions. They're out there, Stella. I don't care what your little investigation turned up. You haven't been out in these woods as long as I have. Those sons of bitches are sneaky. Of course you wouldn't find any in one night of tracking. And I know for a fact that's where... That's what's been getting at my chickens. It couldn't be anything else. I'm telling you, man, mountain lions are extinct in these parts. There wasn't been actual sightings since the 1990s, and even those were iffy. 
I can't believe you go out there in your own YouTube saying some river monster spotted by a couple of school-age boys scouts have been 100% confirmed, yet Appalachian Cougars are some kind of far-fetched fantasy made up by geezers like me. You made me look like a fool. I read those comments people were posting on your video. They were calling me all kinds of names just for seeing things with my own eyes that I know to be true. I'm sorry, Duke. I didn't mean to sick anyone on you. I just don't think it's plausible. You'll eat those words when I come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of the woods at dawn. If you two don't want a face full of buckshot, I suggest you run home and stay out of the woods tonight. Uh, yeah, don't, don't put him. Just let that you stand awkwardly by as the two continue to argue. Duke, you're just wasting time. Give us just one night out there to see what we can find, and I'm sure we can get to the bottom of this. Yeah, right, you'll get some shaky footage of a raccoon and claim it's a uh, heretofore unknown creature that has heat ray vision of some such nonsense. I know what I'm looking for, and there's no way I'm backing down. But I've got a film tonight. The video needs to be out by tomorrow evening so I can keep on schedule. If I miss an update, I might lose my new sponsor, and who knows what that'll mean for my career. You ain't the only one on my schedule. As you well know, my boy Bo and me are headed down to the state fair to show off Big Betty tomorrow morning. We'll be gone near a whole week, so our chicken coop might as well have a big ol' kit all-you-can-eat sign on it. You know how I feel about my chickens. I couldn't take it if I lost any more of my poor little ladies. Let's just go Stella. He's not gonna budge. You're right, no point losing any more time to arguing. Fine, we'll head back to town. Break a leg out there, Duke. Break a what now? I mean, good luck, old man. Alright, have a nice night, y'all. Alright, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap here and f see if we can find uh, somebody to raid. Uh, let's see. have a few options going. Uh, let's see. Just refreshed on me. All right. Got uh Shannon is playing some Dead by Daylight. So y'all can uh Go check them out. They are also running charity. So we'll send y'all over there. Set the raid command. Uh, oh no, you're good. I appreciate you coming in and saying hi. Uh, thank you so much. Always appreciate seeing folks coming in. Um, uh, let's see. I will... I probably... Unless I do something off schedule, the next couple of Sundays I'm going to take off. So I'll be back the first Sunday of December. Uh, I'll be working on some other stuff, and you guys can find me lurking in some other channels. I'll probably join in some multiplayers at some point. Um, you guys can follow me on Twitter. I'll make all sorts of announcements. Uh, be hosting cool folks here as I can. Um, and I got a new update coming to Patreon soon. Shout out to my patrons, Crystal Clark, Dina Holloway, Brianna Gary, Allison Nesbitt, Charlie, Wander the World Destroyer, Mr. Lost, Totally Not a Flock of Pigeons in a Trench Coat, Matt Joro, and Essie. Thank y'all so, so much for y'all's continued support. It really, truly means the world to me. Um, and I got some announcements coming to Patreon if y'all want to join over there uh be added to the shout out list and get uh information before everybody else before i post it over on twitter um other than that uh, y'all share some love with shannon and y'all have a wonderful evening and don't let monday kick your ass